G'day everybody, what we're going to look at this afternoon is how to install the valve body into a ZF5HB19 transmission. Uh, before you put the valve body in, if you disassembled the whole transmission, uh, you would obviously need to put in the two uh, oil pump tubes, as well as a spring and this brass piece for the uh, pressure control valve in there. Also, if you'd removed the uh, the input speed sensor, uh, that would also need to be uh, put in. Uh, but then we're going to put in uh, the valve body. <coughs> when I put in the valve body, I'm going to have all of the electrical connections uh, attached to it. Now when I put the valve body into the transmission, if it's like this, it's actually a relatively simple task. Uh, however, if it's in the car, then the valve body itself is actually quite heavy. So my suggestion is that you would have a floor jack sitting underneath here and gently raise the, the valve body into position whilst lining everything up so we don't damage any of these faces on here on the transmission or on the underside of the valve body. When we put the valve body in, uh, something that we need to do is ensure that the little a uh, notch here on the manual selector valve actually lines up here with this uh, tang. So what I'm going to do is gently lower that down. Make sure that I may have to move that shaft a little bit so it's in the right position. And then once that's slotted I'm going to line up the holes at the front here. Make sure everything's in the right spot. And then once it's there, I can just gently push it down. And that's in a position. <coughs> once that's in position, we can start to put in the bolts. I won't actually put in a whole load of these, so you don't have to watch me do that. I'll just put in a couple. Once that's connected, now we can uh, connect up all of the electrical connections. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just this one here, which is for that input speed sensor. It just gets pushed straight in there and then just clipped onto the little lugs on the top of the valve body. The next one is going to be the output speed sensor, which is down here. These would obviously need to be torqued correctly as per the ZF manual. And the last one we need to put in is the large electrical plug that goes to the outside. The best way to do that is just feed it down here, stick your fingers through. and then just from the inside just push it into place. Make sure you look down here, it's pretty obvious if it's not flush. And then once that's in, then we can just put on that clip to make sure that doesn't come out. Once we've done that we can put on the oil filter. Pretty simple operation, there are two bolts uh, the one at the back, just leave that loosely in. Uh, the one at the front, we can remove. I'm just going to slide our new filter. Obviously this one isn't new, but you would put a new filter in there. And then just push it in. Uh, 
and torque both those bolts. I think they take about six newton meters. And then once we've done that, we would get our pan. We put a new gasket, obviously around the outside. Clean out our pan, make sure the magnets are nice and clean, and then. Put it on. And torque all those bolts. Um, I think the Bentley manual talks about using uh, blue Loctite on these to ensure that they don't vibrate loose. Uh, I've heard of people on the forum actually saying that they've uh, had issues with this with leakage after not actually having used a Loctite so I would suggest you do that. Once everything's on there and torqued again these I think take six newton meters then we're going to obviously have the fill plug tightened and torqued we're going to go down to our fill plug which is the one down here we're going to use a pump and a tube to fill uh, the transmission up with fluid until it just starts to leak out of here. Then what you're going to do is put that back in. Jump into the car, start the car, and then start. put your foot on the brake and move the gear lever through park drive, uh, reverse, etc. a whole bunch of times. Uh, they say leaving it in gear about three seconds at a time, and what that's going to do is fill up the entire valve body, etc. with fluid. Uh, and that's going to actually lower the level that's in the pan here. So don't turn the car off, put it back in park, uh, don't turn the car off, come back down underneath the car, remove this and then fill it up so it's only just leaking again. Now the correct temperature as per the, the little sticker here is between 30 and 50 degrees, so ideally about 40 degrees Celsius. Best way to tell that if you don't have uh, the diagnostics uh, connected to your car, just put your hand on the pan if it feels just gently warm, then that's about exactly the right temperature. Uh, you should be filled, so again, it's only just dribbling out of here at the right temperature, then you can put that back in and then torque it. And only once that's plugged again and torqued, then go and uh, turn off the car. If you turn off the car uh, whilst this is out, a whole bunch of fluid is actually going to flow out, so it needs to be going uh, when you actually torque this for the final time. Okay, I hope this helps.